Hi, good people. It's Amy from Savor Salvage Scent. Hope this finds you well. For those of you new to the channel, this mostly focuses on all things fragrance related. And for those of you returning, thank you so much for being here. Um, first, I'll just say today's theme is to do with um, scents that I think are great for bridging fall to winter and are what I would call investment scents. So the last few videos I did focused on fall favorites that were affordable, um, or I would say super budget friendly, like $40 or under and lots for 20 and $10 price points. Um, today, I would say these are all scents that I've paid more than $40 for. Um, there's quite a range here. I'm not gonna talk about every note. I'm just gonna quickly go through these. I think I have about 25 cents here. And I'm kind of going in order of like older to newer, not exactly, but kind of in that general range. So first, Estee Lauder's Cinnabar. This was one of my first loves, absolutely love it. This to me is like fruit, florals, uh, I get a lot of vetiver and patchouli, and I wanna thank my friend, you know who you are, for just sending me this old bottle. Um, this, again, was something I fell in love with when I was in my teens. This is what uh, the, the older ladies around me were wearing, and one of the things that made me fall in love with perfume. I would say, now everything's relative, but this is a scent that um, I think does smell vintage, and, um, I think I was early to like it because this was kind of in style when I was younger. I don't think personally this is something that most people would love in their teens. I did because long story short, there were so many perfumes around me like this, but um, this does smell vintage and I think is complex. Next is uh, Nikki de Saint Fal. Unfortunately, this is discontinued. This is the bath oil. And this is the perfume gifted by uh, another friend. You know who you are and thank you so much. Um, this is, talk about something I wouldn't have been ready for in my teens, but absolutely adore now. This to me is absolutely foresty, as much about leaves that it is about the earth and the ground, super green, but I think has elements that definitely think make me think of a forest in the fall to winter. Um, next, I would say any version of opium, honestly, uh, any of the older original versions of opium, so not black opium, etc. Um, here I have a uh, flanker called Secret de Parfum Opium, and then I have a newer bottle of opium. What are the differences, you might wonder? Um, this, I would say any version of opium, I think to me has like a orange, resin, amber incense kind of feel. I think they're mostly dry. Um, this one, I would say, is a bit more round vanillic than this one to me, um, but both to me have that um, kind of ambery orange, almost like a burnt match feel. So opium, these do tremendous, um, again, from fall to winter. <clears throat> Another for me would be Samsara. This was a, another one of my first loves. In fact, I remember this spraying this in the dead of winter and just walking around town. I tested it first and like I could not get enough of it. I just kept smelling uh, or huffing my skin. I could not believe how good it was. This is a lot of things. It's a huge composition. This is one of the first things that I wore that I went, this is me. Um, I'm just gonna name a few things that come out for me, but there's many more. Uh, orange, myrrh, jasmine, amber, patchouli, vanilla, um, tonka, sandalwood, uh, musk, etc., and big jasmine. Now, I think this is even worth trying, even though it's so heavy in the jasmine, if you don't like jasmine, because all those other things play a big part too. Um, but just so gorgeous, resinous, floral, but so much more and so much so deep that this is a great floral you can wear in the fall to winter. So Sam Star by Guerlain. Two more by Guerlain. Mitsuko. You can see I haven't used of this, a lot of this. You might say, why? Well, it took me a long time to come around to this. Uh, a few of my friends, Selena, uh, etc., absolutely love Mitsuko. And I would say this guy has been, um, or maybe woman, I'm not sure, has been moody since 1919. I find this to be a very moody perfume. 
I almost found it um, depressing, honestly, in the beginning. And then I started to wear it in like rainy weather, etc. And then I started to really, really love it. It has a dry quality that reminds me of um, leaves that have fallen. A few things that come out for me in a big way are florals, especially peach, ylang-ylang, vetiver, amber, oak moss, and spices. Um, but very, very dry. I, again, find this to be melancholic, but so, so beautiful. And uh, last in the Guerlain category here is Nahima. This is a rose I think that is great from the fall to the winter. Um, of course, it has other things. For me, what comes out is um, a little bit of clove or eugenol. Eugenol is a spice or a chemical that has, sorry, chemical that has like a clovey feeling. It's incarnation as well. Um, some powder comes out in this. It's dry due to patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, but predominantly I would say it's a rose, but with these dry and interesting qualities, just absolutely beautiful. And I think an unsung hero in um, Guerlain's house. So Nahima. Next I have on today, Poison by Dior. This is a bombastic floral, but it also has these resinous, earthy things that I think make it really, really complex and not your average floral. I'm not gonna say more about it. There are a lot of reviews around it, but I find it to be um, almost like a Gothic floral, very worthy of its bottle and absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I'm really digging myself today. I don't know what to say. It's such a gorgeous scent. Um, two, I just have small, small bottles of because they are very expensive, um, but these are two scents that if I had to choose, somebody made me choose a signature, signature scent. I think they're totally worthy of that. The first is Sycamore. Um, again, there's a lot of things in Sycamore, but I would call it like the sexiest tree perfume ever. Um, it smells very much of vetiver. It's one of the scents that made me fall in love with the grassy, dry, hay, vetiver quality. Um, but it has also has cypress, tobacco, violet, juniper, uh, et cetera. So just gorgeous tree forest, um, not quite as green as the Nikki Day St. Paul that I talked about, more about the woods, um, sycamore and vetiver, just beautiful. Um, Coromandel is another amber, but um, what's really interesting about it is it has some white chocolate in it. It also has a bit of orange. Um, this is a perfect scent to me. It's just so phenomenal. Um, it also has patchouli, orris, resins, incense, wood, um, big in the wood, but um, I think the white chocolate is what makes it really unique. And um, it's like a cross between an old amber and a gourmand. And again, just perfect to me. Two, Serge Luton I'm gonna talk about. Um, I think where a lot of uh, his scents get a lot more recognition, um, I think Araby is probably my favorite, if not neck to neck with the next one. Um, this is like supposed to smell like a Middle Eastern spice market, but to me, it's like all about the dried fruits. I get a lot of date and raisin. Also, there's caraway that stands out in this, and I think it's probably a love or hate for people because of it, but absolutely gorgeous, unique. And this is one that I just like through the day, I'm like, I cannot believe how good this is. So great, Araby by uh, Serge Luton and Christopher Sheldrake, The Nose. Um, and then Un Bois Vigny is a vanilla I think that's perfect in the fall to the winter, um, partly because of the wood aspect, but also because it has the most gorgeous licorice. If you don't like licorice, you're probably not gonna like this, but to me, it is my perfect vanilla because of the wood and the um, licorice, it's beautiful. Speaking of um, licorice anise qualities, I'm almost out of this, as you can see. This is a Joe Malone, very simple. I'm not sure if it's made anymore. It's uh, vanilla and anise. And that's basically what it is. Not much more, but it is gorgeous. This is another one, the first time I sprayed it, I was like, yeah, I have to have it. It's phenomenal, perfect for me. Uh, Joe Malone, vanilla and anise. Light, like a lot of Joe Malones, but I spray five or six times and I get about five hours out of it. Um, next is a diptyque. I love this house and how I was treated in France. I love their candles. Um, however, I have to say, just to be fair, uh, this is Tam Dao. This is gifted by a friend. You know who you are. Um, and unfortunately, the sprayer broke like the week I was gifted it. 
and I have been to the counter um, here locally at a Saks and they said, so sorry, we can't help you. That bottle was only um, sold in France. I have written the company, I don't know how many times and they're completely <laughs> ignoring me. So I'm a little mm, about that. But this is one of my favorite resin scents, totally worth the money. It is really wood, resin and sandalwood and it's just this gorgeous dry incense. I absolutely love this thing, so gorgeous. I would hate to be without it. Tam Dow by Diptyque. Another beautiful dry um, scent, but now focused on saffron is Calligraphy Saffron by Aramis. Um, what else is it? Um, I wrote here, what I get the most of is saffron, bergamot, tonka, vetiver. It's grassy, but yet it's got this warm, almost gourmand quality. It's just beautiful. I think this one has recently gone out of commission, so look into it if you're interested soon. Um, a newer scent, this is Slow Dive by Hiram Green. This to me is a honey that is more resinous and can move from the fall to the winter. Um, very syrupy, almost dirty, gorgeous thing. I have two scents here by Bottega Veneta. The first is the original. This to me is mostly suede and plum. That's about it to me, but the most buttery, gorgeous thing ever. Everyone I've had smell this that isn't um, familiar with it says, God, that smells rich. It smells like the inside of a handbag and they've done it here. It's phenomenal. Then Bottega Veneta, not. Um, Veronica says, suggested this in one of her videos and I got it immediately, fell in love with it. She said it smells like Neutrogena's rain bath. I agree. It reminds me of the original, but then add a lot of myrrh. And I love myrrh. So if you love myrrh, this is totally a wonderful scent from fall to winter. Next is a Laura Mercier that does not get a lot of hype. A lot of her cheaper scents get a lot of hype. Um, I know there's an ambery vanilla one that I really love and wear, but this is called like Passion and it's one of the more expensive ones. And I just, I don't know what to tell you other than to me, it's a perfect amber. It's not too um, thick or heavy. It's not too dry. It's not too sweet though. It's kind of right in the middle. So this is Laura Mercier's um, amber that's called, I think, Passion or Passion. Um, there are three I'm gonna quickly talk about from Solstice Sense. If you wanna learn more about them, I have many videos. One is Conjure, which to me is a perfect combination of vanilla and resin. And what do you do when you conjure? <laughs> you pull close or you're like mystified by something. Perfect. Next is Solstice Kefi, which is the most interesting um, incense perfume that has a lot of orange and things that like you would have at an altar for offerings. Um, really gorgeous, definitely gourmand, and I think it's out of the box for that reason. It's like incense and food mixed, but so, so cool. And then last from Solstice Scents, which is Cottage, which is a really beautiful herbal scent mixed with things that you would find like in the kitchen or the hearth, including um, Sweet Annie, which is a really interesting hay-like dry um, herb. It's really, really beautiful. And to close this out, a few um, newer scents uh, by Rado's Balde Afrique. A lot of people have talked about this. What comes out most for me is bergamot, lemon, marigold, blackcurrant, florals, amber, cedar, but mostly to me, it's the marigold that I love with the orange. And I think it takes it from being just an orangey scent to a fall to winter orangey scent with that marigold. It's got like a bitter, almost smoky quality. 